two elite prospects this draft is Brady Kachuk and Oliver Wallstrom. Who would you select first? And we're going to talk about it next. So welcome back, guys, to Hockey Scouting Reports. And so if you're new, what we do here is we look at a different prospect every single day. We also take a deep look at different prospect pools and who they have coming up. And then we also do comparison views just like this one. So if you're interested in all this content, please like and subscribe. Like I said, it's every single day. And then if you're returning, I'm so glad you're back. So glad you're enjoying the content. If you haven't subscribed already and you enjoy the content, make sure to. And I love hearing from you guys in the comments, so make sure you guys stay active. I, I love hearing from you guys. It's always great to keep that conversation going. And then lastly, before we get into the content, uh, check out my Twitter. It is at HockeyLevine, using the hashtag, hashtag HockeyLevineTalk. And so what I do there is it's just really quick daily posts, a few of them, just about prospects that we don't have enough time to have a full video on, but prospects worth mentioning. And then also some sneak peeks at what the video is going to be of the day. And so you get to hear about that beforehand and, you know, kind of guess what it's going to be. But also there's some content there that uh, will not be covered in videos. So let's get right into it. This has certainly been a video that's been requested by quite a few people. I posted on Twitter a couple of days ago hinting at a video like this. And there was uh, some good response to that. So uh, we're going to get right at it. And if there's any other comparison videos that you ever want me to do, just comment below. And I'm definitely open to doing them. So what we're doing is we're going to compare... Brady Kachuk and Oliver Wallstrom. Now, obviously, these are going to be top seven draft picks this draft. A lot of people are going to say that Brady Kachuk is going fourth. A lot of people are going to say Oliver Wallstrom is going seventh. But you always have to remember that other people in this conversation, of course, is Adam Bo um, is uh, Evan Bouchard, Adam Boquist, Noah Dobson. You could throw in a lot of names. And then, of course, there's Zadina and Svechnikov, which are the assumed two and three. So there's a lot of people that go in this position. Of course, Quentin Hughes is another one that could very well go number three. So, of course, we don't know exactly where Kachuk or Walsham will go, but let's talk about it. Which one would you select first? Okay, so first, I'll, the way I want to look at this, I always like to find different categories that I like to look at scouting reports in, in certain ways that we evaluate players. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. We're going to evaluate these two based on certain characteristics. And that's size, versatility, stats, skills, development, comparable, projection. So those are the ones that we're really going to focus on. And then from there, we'll be able to grade which one I think is more valuable to a team or they even. So first, we'll look at uh, Brady Kachuk. So in size, Brady Kachuk is 6'3", 196. Walsham is 6'1", 205. So clearly Brady uh, Kachuk has the size advantage on Walsham clearly. Also, Kachuk plays a much more physical game. So of course that size is so much more needed for him. So in the size sense, of course, Kachuk is winning this. Uh, uh, Height-wise, of course, it's two inches. Weight, Walsham does have some on him. But it's questionable if Walsham will remain heavier for much longer. Of course, being Kachuk being 196 at already 18... Uh, it's very likely that Kachuk will gain more, and knowing how physical he is, he will probably go up to about 210. Walsham might be around that size, but usually snipers aren't as big because they want to be speedy players. They don't want to be slowed down. So I expect uh, Kachuk to be overall the two inches bigger and then about 10 pounds more heavy. So uh, I give the size to Kachuk. So versatility, uh, what I mean by versatility is the way they play the position, what positions are they able to play? When you're looking at someone like Zadina, he's pretty much a left winger. Svechnikov is a right winger. Neither of them are really going to transition from there. Different story with Brady Kachuk and Oliver Wallstrom. Both of them can play center, but Kachuk can also play left wing. Wallstrom can play right wing. And when we're talking about which one is more uh, dominant for them, I think Kachuk is he's probably better at playing center only because he's played it more. But he's equally adept at left wing, and in the NHL, he will play left wing. And I say that because Matthew Kachuk, his brother, same story. He could play center for London Knights, and he did. But eventually, he made that transition to left wing, which, of course, he's doing with the Calgary Flames today. If you look at Oliver Wallstrom, he's a good center, but I think he's a better right winger. And that goes along with his sniping ability. Uh, when you see snipers, oftentimes, they are wingers, they're not centers. And I think Brady Kachuk, he has that playmaking skill as well, and that's why he's equally adept at center. You look at someone like Pierre-Luc Dubois, he was considered to be a great, white, uh, great uh, winger. 
He was drafted. No one knew would he be a winger, would he be a center. Came into Columbus, started playing on the right wing, instantly moved up because of injuries to the number one center, and he hasn't looked back. So I think a lot of guys' versatility is huge for them. And a lot of teams like the draft players that have versatility. So I think in this sense, I would give it to both of them. Both of them are equally versatile in different ways. I think Kachuk is a better center than Wallstrom. But that being said, I don't think either of them will be playing center. They'll be playing on the left or right wing. So in that sense, it comes down to the team that's drafting at that position. If they need a left wing, they're obviously not going Wallstrom. And if they need a right wing, they're not going Kachuk. Obviously, if they need a left wing, they also might consider Zadina if he's available. Right wing, you might consider Svechnikov if he's available, but most likely they're not at this position. So now we want to look at stats. So what are the stats between these two players? How can we compare them? Of course, they're playing on different uh, leagues, but it is slightly more comparable because they're both American and they're both playing in American leagues. So Brady Kachuk, he was a freshman this year in the NCAA, played for Boston University. That is the same college that his father Keith went to. Of course, like I said, Matthew Kachuk, his brother, went to the London Knights. And so Brady this year, as a freshman, 40 games played, 8 goals, 23 assists, 31 points, 61 penalty minutes, and a plus 15. It's actually very hard to have a, a strong plus minus in the NCAA, because especially as a freshman, you come in and you struggle. You look at someone like Ryan Paling, drafted late first round by the uh, Montreal Canadiens last year, he certainly came in and did a decent job, but he was also the youngest player in the NCAA that year. So he, he was still struggling to a certain degree. This year, big turnaround, so much better. And so you look at someone like Brady Kachuk, he could have a massive turnaround. That being said, he's probably going to be NHL next year. The other story that we have to mention is that Brady Kachuk is much older than some freshmen, whereas Wallstrom isn't, and we will get into that by looking at their age. So what I want to talk about with their age is the fact that that Kachuk, he missed the draft last year by a mere hours. I think it was eight hours. He was born just a little bit later than the cutoff day in September. Wallstrom only turns, he has not turned 18 yet. He turns 18, I believe, 11 days before the draft. So we're talking about a year difference, very slightly, but about a year difference. So clearly Wallstrom, he's a year less in his development than Kachuk is, and that's huge for them, and we'll talk about that. So like I said, looking at the stats, Kachuk, 8 goals, 23 assists for 31 points in 40 games. That is very good for a freshman. 61 penalty minutes, clearly a very physical force. Plus 15, very responsible. You look at Wallstrom, he played for the USDP, the uh, United States national team. And he, in the development program, 53 games played, 40 goals, 42 assists for 82 points, 38 penalty minutes. So from a quick look at it, you think, wow, 40 goals... Kachuk only had eight. Well, obviously, Wallstrom is, is a sniping goal scorer. Brady Kachuk isn't really that. So, of course, that is part of the comparison. Now, when you also look at Wallstrom, 82 points versus Kachuk's 31, you also have to consider competition. The USDP is a good development program, but it's not as strong as the NCAA. If it was, players wouldn't go to the NCAA. They would be drafted from the USDP or they'd go to juniors. You know, there's a reason why you go to NCA, and Wallstrom is doing the exact same thing. He's going to Harvard next year, so clearly there is a progression. So Kachuk is certainly ahead in his development, and that's why he is, he will be NHL next year, almost guaranteed, because his brother did the same jump from London. You look at Wallstrom, he has not made that much development in, in the sense that he could be NHL ready. So the other thing you want to talk about is who Wallstrom played with. Of course, Kachuk had talented players, Boston University always does, but he was certainly the main player of the team. No one else really stands out to that degree. Wallstrom, different story. He played with Jack Hughes, that was a guy centering him. Jack Hughes is the next elite American snipe, uh, the next elite American center, and he will be the number one draft pick in the next year's draft, the 2019 draft. So obviously playing on his wing, you're going to snipe an insane amount of goals because you're playing with the next elite American center. So that certainly plays into it. The other thing is Wallstrom also played with Joe Farabee. And if you haven't checked out that scouting report I did a couple of days ago, feel free to. I'll put a link uh, on the top of the video. And so Farabee also, he's a great goal scorer. He's probably going to go 10 to 12 this draft. So Wallstrom played with incredible talent. Now I'm not saying Kachuk didn't, but when we're looking at Wallstrom's points, you have to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, knowing that without Hughes and without Farabee, Walsham would not have these many points. He'd probably have 40 points, 20 goals, maybe even a little bit less. 
And if we're saying 40 points, 20 goals in the USDP versus 23 assists, 31 points in the NCAA, it pretty much evens out on who has it. And then you give the edge to Kachuk because NCAA is more higher competition. The other thing worth noting is World Juniors. And I think that's where we can really see which one kind of stands out in their development. And so obviously World Juniors both are American. Kachuk was selected to the World Juniors and he was one of their best players. Walsham was not selected. He was initially selected for the U18 team. He hasn't played it. Brady Kachuk was selected to the U20 team, played it, and destroyed it. So clearly Kachuk performed very high in pressure. Walsham didn't have that chance. And so let's talk about that. Brady Kachuk for the World Juniors, seven games played, three goals, six assists for nine points. So clearly he's showing he's not just physical. He only had two penalty minutes and then a plus six. So he shows he's reliable. He's not just physical. He's not just an agitator. But he truly is a goal scorer, and he also can be a great playmaker. And that really stands out. Over a point per game, only a handful of players were a point per game in the World Juniors. And he was arguably America's best player in the entire tournament. And this is also considering other players like Ryan Paling and Kyler Yamamoto. And then when you want to compare Brady Kachuk's World Juniors to Zadina's and Svechnikov, this is where it gets interesting. So Brady Kachuk had three goals, six assists. Well, Zadina had one assist. One. Kachuk had six. Now, obviously, we know that Zadina went off with goals. I believe he had seven. So, clearly, Zadina is a much better goal scorer. But in playmaking, Kachuk destroys him in that. But also, Kachuk does have a goal scoring prowess. So, it shows that Kachuk certainly has a more broader two way game that is built up. Whereas Zadina didn't really show that. He mainly just showed being a goal scorer. Also, Zadina was playing with. Martin Nietzsche, so you have to figure that was doing uh, a lot of help for Zadina. Then you want to look at Svechnikov. This is where it gets very interesting. Svechnikov put up five assists, Kachuk six. And in the video that I did a couple weeks ago about Svechnikov, we talked about how Svechnikov does have very strong playmaking skills, which, are, which is pretty underrated. So five assists is pretty nice. But Svechnikov is a goal scorer. He had zero goals. Zero. Zadina had seven. So that could be huge when it comes to drafting between Svechnikov and Zadina. Obviously, like I said, playing with Nietzsche, Svechnikov didn't get to play with Nietzsche. So there's a big difference there. But then you will also want to look at Brady Kachuk. He had three goals. Svechnikov had zero. So you have to wonder, does Svechnikov have less of a goal scoring talent than Brady Kachuk? I don't think so. Obviously, we know that Svechnikov has elite hands, elite scoring, but it is interesting to see how talented Brady Kachuk is. Wallstrom is not in this conversation. He didn't attend juniors, and so Kachuk, once again, has more development that he's done at a higher level. He has this NCAA practice. He has this World Juniors practice. Wallstrom doesn't have this, and so I give the edge once again to Kachuk. Obviously, Wallstrom is going to go to the NCAA next year. He could truly uh, destroy it there. But from what we've seen this year, he played with two elite players that bolstered his scoring, and he didn't get to perform at the World Juniors to show if he really is as elite as he is. Now, I'm not knocking Wallstrom. He is a top 5 of 7 draft pick. I think he's phenomenal. I think he's going to be the next great American sniper. But all the same, when you're comparing these two, you have to know that Kachuk is much farther in his development. And so that's one of the things I want to talk about. Which one is farther in their development? Well, Kachuk, like I said, missed the draft by mere hours. Wallstrom turns 18, 19, uh, nine days before the draft. So certainly Wallstrom is younger, which means his development isn't f as far. And as a result, Wallstrom, he's going to the NCA, like I said. But being younger, he certainly will have time to develop there at Harvard, which is good for him. So in the long term, he might be more developed. You look back at Kachuk, his brother went straight off from his draft year. He got drafted, went straight to the Calgary Flames. He didn't go back to juniors. I think Brady Kachuk can do the exact same thing. He's not going back to Boston University. He's going straight to the NHL, whoever drafts him. You know, Matthew Kachuk fell to sixth. He still went straight to the NHL, and he put up over 40 points. Brady Kachuk is going to do that exact same thing. So when you're drafting these players... Do you draft someone who can go in your lineup today, 40 points, even higher? Or do you draft someone who won't be in your lineup for two years? Certainly when he comes in, he's going to be a great goal scorer, but you have to wait a while. It depends what team is drafting, you know. If it's someone like the Senators, they probably have to go long-term on the rebuild. They don't have much talent after Logan Brown. 
Colin White. And so they might would rather have Wallstrom because he's a longer term pick that they can truly build their team around. Or if you're looking at teams that don't want to be bad for much longer, you look at someone like the Sabres. They want to win now. If they fall to fourth, I guarantee you they're taking pretty good chuck because they want to win now and they want someone who can be a physical presence next to Jack Eichel. That's pretty good chuck. So it depends what team is drafting. If someone like the Rangers wins the lottery and goes up to fourth, do they go long term or do they want to win now? Having Leas Anderson and Philip Heathel already in the lineup makes me think they want to win sooner than later. So it's going to be a toss up. So what you want to look at next, I think, is the skills of each player. How do they line up? Because certainly we can say numbers, certainly we can say projections, but truly what are the skills? Well, Brady, Brady Kachuk is extremely physical. He loves to get in the dirty areas. He's extremely strong in front of the net, so he's always going to get in the net. He's going to screen, he's going to, uh, screen the goalie. He's going to tip pucks out of the air. He has great hand-eye coordination to bat the pucks down. He plays a full 200-foot game. This is someone who is defensively responsible, but will also do it on the offensive side, as we've seen with the points, especially in the World Juniors. Extremely aggressive. He's an agitator. He's a chirper. He's going to get in your face. Matthew Kachuk gets in your face. He got in Drew Doughty's face as a rookie to show that he's afraid of no one. Well, Matthew Kachuk said that his brother scares him a little bit. His brother is bigger, heavier, more aggressive, and nastier. So if we're talking about a nastier Matthew Kachuk, I want to see it. And even more so, Matthew Kachuk says that Brady scores more and better. So if we're talking about a more offensive and nastier Matthew Kachuk, I really want to see that. The next thing you want to talk about with, of course, uh, Brady Kachuk is when you look at uh, how he plays the game overall, certainly he's a goal scorer, but he's very skilled. We just talked about uh, very skilled players in a video earlier today with Dominic Boog, extremely skilled. Kachuk is very skilled, great hand-eye coordination. He screens the goal very well, good skater, good acceleration, good speed, excellent hockey IQ, and of course, excellent genetics. You have someone like your brother, Matthew Kachuk, and your, your father, Keith Kachuk, who have been these physical imposers and agitators and chirpers, you know what runs in the family. Brady will be the exact same way. Brady also drops the shoulder extremely well, and when he's driving to the net, no one's knocking him off the puck because he has great balance. He, he uh, of course, like I said, drives the net very well. He has a great shot, great release to quick release, and he has a good one-timer. So that's really huge for building his game. He has all the offensive instincts, but he plays a full 200-foot game. So let's look at Wallstrom. Wallstrom is a natural goal scorer. Notice I did not say that with Brady Kachuk. I did not say natural goal scorer. Wallstrom is a natural goal scorer who is a constant offensive threat. He anticipates the play very well. He has great hockey sense, very soft hands, which allow him to transition the game offensively and score more. He plays 100% every shift. He's a goal scoring threat from anywhere, much like Svechnikov. He has uh, he's some of the best pure puck skills in the draft. Wallstrom can do things with a puck that pretty much no one else can. He's highly skilled in that regard. Very strong stride. Very good speed. Quick feet. He can be a sniper on the wing or a playmaker at center. So certainly he has abilities at both ends. Of course, we saw that he was much more of a goal scorer when he put up 40 goals in the USDP this year. But certainly he can play at center, like I said, with the versatility. He certainly can score in a variety of ways. He has filthy deeks. His lateral quickness is unbelievable. Notice I did not say lateral quickness or filthy deeks with Brady Kachuk. Certainly Kachuk has deeks, but it's not something that I mentioned. Also, Wallstrom, though he can be physical when needed, his physical game is questioned, and his defensive play is very much questioned. The reason Wallstrom is not a top three pick in pretty much any mock draft is because he doesn't have a defensive game. It's pretty much just offensive. And if his goal scoring touch isn't working, where will his game be? We talked about today with Dominic Book in a video, without the puck, he struggles. So where is he? The same thing with Wallstrom. Without, without the puck, he's going to struggle. So where is he? And you see that with Brady Kachuk, he does not struggle without the puck. He is dominant without the puck. This is when he makes his best physical plays is without the puck. He will get in your face. He'll be a chirper. He'll be aggressive. So the big takeaway from these skills that we want to look at is that Wallstrom is so much better at goal scoring than Brady Kachuk. It's obvious. You look at playmaking, it's about even. You look at skating, it's about even. So I give the edge to Wallstrom and goal scoring. They're even in pretty much every other technical skill. But then you give the aid, you give the um, advantage to Brady Kachuk in physical play and defensive play. And so like I said, it depends on the team that's drafting them. 
If they need a goal scorer, they're going Wallstrom. But if they need someone who's going to be defensively reliable, if they have defensive problems and they need a physical play, they're going Kachuk. Perfect example of this, look at the Oilers. The Oilers have scores. They have Pugliarvi. They have Yamamoto. They lack physical defense. Their defensive game has been struggling. And then you look at the physical sense. They just moved out Patrick Maroon. Milan Lukic's been on the longest streak of no goals since he finished out the season. He got a goal with like two games left. The Oilers clearly need to step it up, and I think the Chuck could be the way. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go on this one, and I think that is certainly the way I would go. I would take that physical presence if I was the Oilers. And so the last thing that I think is worth looking at is the projection of both players. And then we'll wrap it all up, and we'll see what grades we can give them. So Brady Kachuk, he projects to be a top-line left winger who will be a goal scorer, but certainly he's an agitator, a chirper, and a physical presence who's also reliable defensively, and he'll be on the penalty kill and the power play, especially the five-on-three. He could very well be on the five-on-three. Wallstrom is a top-line pure goal scorer. He's a sniper, and he will be your power play specialist. And so where will they line up points-wise? Well, I see Kachuk being a 25-goal scorer, 40 points, and then about 60 or 40 assists, 60 to 70 points overall, 40 to uh, 40, uh, 60 to 100 penalty minutes. You look at Wallstrom, I see 30 or 35 goals, so certainly more goals. 30 to 40 assists. I said Kachuk would be 40 assists, so I think Wallstrom has slightly less in the overall playmaking, but of course his goal scoring is higher. And both of them, that averages out to 60 to 70 points. The only difference is Kachuk's got 100 penalty minutes, Walsham doesn't. And so if we're talking about very similar points, but also this physical presence, you might want to lean Kachuk. But of course, Walsham has more goals. So it's very close. And the last thing we want to talk is the comparables between the two. For Brady Kachuk, it is Matthew Kachuk, his brother. For Walsham, it is Phil Kessel. Two very strong picks, and it depends who you want. If you want the goal scorer, you're going Kessel. If you want the physical branch, you're going Matthew Kachuk. So let's look very quickly at them. Kachuk, obviously the sixth overall pick in the 2016 draft. Of course, he went right to the Flames. Rookie year, 13 goals, 35 assists for 48 points with 105 penalty minutes in 76 games. That's exactly what uh, Brady Kachuk will do in his rookie year next year. And then, of course, Matthew Kachuk went on. Uh, he played in the World Juniors his draft year, much like Brady did. Matthew played seven games, four goals, seven assists for 11 points. You look back at Brady, he also played in that, and for him, he put up three goals, six assists for nine points. So pretty much the exact same. And then, of course, Chuck, uh, Matthew Kachuk this year in the NHL, 68 games, 24 goals, 25 assists for 49 points, 61 penalty minutes. So he ranged in the penalty minutes a little bit, but then he upped his goals to 24. And Brady Kachuk could do that. He's more offensive anyways. So he could come out of the gate with 20 goals. And, of course, 100 penalty minutes is not out of reach for him. Of course, his brother Matthew did that in his rookie year, and Brady is supposedly more aggressive. And so Matthew Kachuk, he's a, he's a great agitator. He's a great physical presence. He gets in your face. He's great in front of the net. He drives the net very well. Excellent offensive instincts, insane skating, great work ethic, great creativity, excellent balance, excellent speed, unbelievable hands. So he said all of this with Brady. You look at Walsham's comparable, it's Phil Kessel, fifth overall pick from the Bruins in 2006. Of course, he played with the Leafs, now the Penguins. He put up 60-plus points in seven seasons in his career, 50-plus points in 10, 30-plus goals in six, 20-plus goals in 10. So clearly, we're talking about an excellent goal scorer, and that's what Walsham will be, this dominant 30-35 goal scorer. And so this year, Phil Kessel, 80 games, 31 goals, 56 assists, 87 points. So, what a season for Phil Kessel. 56 assists. It shows how great of a playmaker he is, but then 31 goals, that's great, you know. And you're going to see that with Walsham. He's going to have this great playmaking ability, but also this great goal-scoring talent. And so, to look at Phil Kessel deeper, he has one of the quickest releases in the NHL, and that's why his goal-scoring is phenomenal. He has quick feet, great skating, strong and powerful stride, insanely powerful shot at the point. He's a pure goal-scorer. He dekes extremely well. He moves the puck well. He creates plays for his teammates, but his defensive ability isn't that good, and he's not physical. So you can see the comparison with Walsham is certainly there. And so I think wrapping this all up, when we look back at size, Kachuk has the advantage. We look at uh, versatility, they're even. We look at stats, Kachuk has the advantage because he's played higher competition and longer. 
We look at skills. They're about even. Walsham's the better goal scorer. Kachuk's better at defense and physical game. Then you look at development. Of course, Kachuk is higher. He's a year ahead. He'll be NHL. Walsham won't be. Then you look at comparables. I'd say they're about even. Obviously, uh, obviously, Kachuk has not played as much as Phil Kessel, and I'm not saying they're even in talent, but in what we're comparing, it depends what you want. If you want this massive goal score, you're going uh, Phil Kessel. If you want this great physical presence that can also put up 20 goals and 40 assists, you're going Brady Kachuk. So it's even in that regard. And then lastly, you look at the projection. It's pretty much the same thing. One can't play defense. One isn't physical. One plays great defense, great physical. They both put up 25 to 40 assists, and then one's going to do 25 to 30 goals, one's doing 30 to 35. So if it's coming down to me picking between the two, I'm someone who likes to build defensive out in the way that uh, I, w I would run a team in the way that I do. And so I would certainly go defense. I would go physicality first. And so Brady Kachuk is the first guy that I would pick. Now, obviously, if you're someone that likes to put the goals up, there's no problem with that. Goals are certainly more important, uh, you could say, than defense in some respects. But without defense, you don't even have an opportunity to play offense. So for me, I would pick Brady Kachuk over Wallstrom. But if you think differently, comment below your thoughts. I'm certainly open to it, and uh, we'll talk about it. So thank you guys uh, for watching. Thank you guys for suggesting this, uh, this video. It's great to talk about these two. I think both of them are going to be phenomenal. So yes, in my opinion, I would pick Brady Kachuk first. Because his edge in goal scoring is only slightly less, and his physicality and defense is so much higher. But both will be great. I would be perfectly happy with either of them on my team. And uh, I think that's where we go from there. So thank you guys for watching. And if you haven't subscribed and you like the content, well, like I said, it's every single day. So subscribe for more. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the comments and in the next video.